Welcome to lesson seven of getting started with Cabmaster. Today we're going to go through more advanced machining options. So the first thing we need to learn is the breadcrumb bar. So this is what we call the breadcrumb bar through here. So this is plan where we are currently. You can come in here and just click the arrow and you can choose whichever cabinet you want. So cabinet number three, cabinet three, floor two door. I'm going to go to here. So what I can do here is I can dimension as you just saw in there. You can click dimension. I can dimension the cabinet in here and go, yep, cool. That's what that is. I can also go into elevation from here. I can also put notes and things, but I go to elevation. I can see the cabinet in here. I can see the left. I can see the, the right. Now, I don't want these dimensions on here. So what I can do, if I go back to plan, go to plan again. From here, I can go to elevations and right click format elevation style turn them off place elevation and so once you place it that should have turned them off so if i now go back to here floor two door elevation and you see they're now gone so you edit it place it then they've gone so i'm going to the right hand side and this lets me go and dimension what i want to dimension in here and the dimensioning works as it does in the other version as well where you double click and very quickly start a new dimension, things like that. So from there to there, double click. So I can put these dimensions in whatever I like. I can add in notes. I can do things like that as well. Um, you can do whatever you like in here. So that's nice and easy. This can go be put onto a report if required as well. So that makes it nice and clean. You can do whatever you like for dimension in here. If you don't like it, you can again highlight it, hit the delete button, do whatever you want to do with it. So you can do things like that as well. Again, left, front, right you can do all these sorts of dimensions and things in here you can also go to 3d in here this is only looking at floor two door so i'll only show this one cabinet but you can still see what it looks like in here as well and you can obviously change it to all these different views as well as per normal so but it's again just for this cabinet i'm going to go back to plan so this is what the plan of this cabinet currently looks like i'm then going to go to the next level down so we're currently at the cabinet level i'm now going to go to the parts i'm going to choose an end left now we're just on the end left. Again, we've got the same buttons down here, but I want to only go to this level here at the moment. So the first thing you need to do is you unlock. And this separates the cabinet from all the formulas and things behind it all as well. So then what you can do, I can actually say click on this part here, go move single hole, and I'll move this, I just do round numbers, 100 mil to the right, and go right or left, 100 mil to the right, so it moves it. That's pretty straightforward. I can also click on here and just go clear. Again, it'll get rid of that. So they were together. Um, what you can do here is actually go split repeats. So now the front and back are now separate. I can also then go separate holes. So instead of having them all as one group, they're all now individual as well. So what that lets me do here is I can click on here and then just go say 100 mil to the right, move them all across. But I can also individually go and, so I'm holding down control button to multiple select. So you can see they're all still in it. These ones are all still in one block, even though I'm highlighting only one. Um, if I want to separate, I need to go separate holes, then I can actually go and click each. Yes, it's only selecting the ones that I've now clicked. I'm holding down the control button as well. So I can now go from there and go clear, and it will only delete those ones there. If you keep them into a pack, so you can see these three here. I click on the middle one. They're all part of the one group. So if you want to do them individually, you just got to go and separate holes, and then say I want it to be separate. Now it's only going to select one. I can also click on the end, for example, and go curve edge. And this is where you can actually just slowly move the mouse. I'm not pressing any buttons at all, just moving the mouse in and out, uh, left and right. Um, and you can select, or you can actually go up here and put in a radius if you know exactly what your radius wants to be. Um, so I can go say 400, and it puts in exactly 400. Hit enter. There's a radius there. I can click on this corner here and go say fillet or chamfer corner. They do the same thing. You can type in a radius, you can type in numbers, or you can just let freehand it. And you'll see the holes in the bottom, that, that construction hole right there, the green one right next to it. As I go above that, that hole disappears because it's off the part. So it knows to get rid of that construction hole there. So you can fill it corners. You can also come up to a rectangle, for example, and go, oh, let's just draw a rectangle here. Uh, I can draw a circular or an ellipse, draw that through there. Um, if you double click on here, again, watch what the mouse is doing. It's doing something different. You open up with this, so I can go change the color, I can change the border layer. Instead of calling border minus, I can call it, you know, cut out three, 
for example, I can change the depth, I can change the size of it. If I know the exact size, I can go, oh, this is going to be 100 by 300. And the bottom corner there is your 0, 0. So if I go, this is going to be at 100 million from the X and 600 up, that's exactly where it needs to be. Um, you need to set up the layer in Ease and SRN route to get the right layer going through. You need to assign a strategy to the layer if you change the layer name. So just be aware of that as well. But you have full control over all the machining inside Cabmaster. So this is at this on the breadcrumb bar. We're now at the second level up, so cabinet part. Um, so just something to be aware of when you come in here. Um, you can't say curve edge. You can do all these sorts of things in here. Um, you've got control over every hole on every part. Just separate them. Uh, again, there's two groups on, on the shelf holes. You had to split the holes front and back then you had to separate them all individually if you want to do something like that normally you just move more together obviously the shelf holes but i'm just showing you extreme of what you can do with it you can also add in more holes you can add in a single hole you can add in multi holes like shelf hole, adjustable shelf holes um click on that follow the prompts you know start here go to here again double click on it what do you want how many holes do you want so i can go through here start, start point end point um number of holes uh no, give me seven that's going to give me seven. Um, I can give them a whole separation, make these all 25 mil apart, just something bizarre. Clearly, your machine's not going to do that. You need 32 mil spacing for your CNC. So you normally do that. Um, you can go 16. It just does every second one. It'll do it in two steps. So it depends what you want. What do you want to look like? You can do acoustic paneling, things like that as well. So you can add in whatever you like. Uh, there's also help. If you follow the help button up here, you can actually um, go to help topics and it'll take you to the website. Uh, and tells you how to use all those things. Once you've m messed up your part enough, like I have here, you can either hit the plan button here. This is a button, takes you back to the plan, or just go return to page view. This is nice and easy to just go, yep, just take me back to where I started from. I'm going to grab this cabinet here. I'm going to go into 3D. And you can see what I've done in this cupboard here. So I've now made a mess of it. There's a cutout. There's a curve, there's a curve down there, things like that. So it's made a bit of a mess of it, um, but that's fine because that's what we asked to do. So that's exactly what we're looking for. Okay, I'm going to use a different cabinet here. What I'm going to do here is first I'm going to go turn the machining off in 3D because it's, there's a lot in there. And I'm also going to change this to show wireframe. The difference is also is set in its directions. This one here can actually move around freehand, so it just makes it easy to move around. So what we're going to do here, there's multiple ways you can do machining, different types of machining. So first thing I want to do, if we go to cabinet machining, I'm going to go view, and it's going to go view the end left. And I always play with the end left, just out of habit. Absolutely no reason for doing that, just habit. First one I want to show you is special cutouts. So we're going to go here, special cutouts. These are pretty simple. So you, use, you can have five per cabinet. So there's a total of five, this is per cabinet, so you choose which part you want it to be in. So we're in the end left. Uh, I want to have, what is it, circle, rectangle, or slot. I want a rectangle. Um, the layer name's called cutout. It's going to cut through in this case. Um, let's just make something. 20 mil, um, 200 mil wide, uh, 150 mil high. We're going to start in the bottom left. Let's call it the bottom left, let's start down here. Now, a fraction, 0.5. And a fraction in y, 0 0.5. 0 0.5 is obviously the center. So 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and you can then offset it from here. Go on, go 100 millimeters. Now it's going to go 100 millimeters in x, so x axis, y axis, in x, so 100 millimeters from the center line. So the center line of this cutout is now 100 millimeters from the center line of that. Ironically, that line was 100 millimeters off as well. So you can move these in any direction, uh, minus 50. So I'm going to go down 50 mil in y. So you've got control over where you want this to go, what you want it to look like. Now, just to point out, this is blue. When you start here by default, if you go to Machining, Tool, Layer, when you do this the first time, look for the Cutout Layer. So Cutout here. This, by default, is always on 2. So do exactly the opposite of what I've just done. Come in here. So come to this page, Machining, Tool, Layer. Find Cutout. Change it from 2 to 5. 5 is, and then hit save, hit OK, and you'll find this goes yellow. Yellow is too hard to see. So what I would suggest, if you come into here, so general, 
a machine general tool layer find the cutout layer be careful you don't change anything else all you want to do is change this cutout is this only displays this color here is only what it displays in cab master it has no bearing on machining if you change any other things this will actually change what it does in machining as well so just be careful of that we can go through this entire list and find anything that's on two so i just hit the down button so press out again change it to something else so anyway any of these things here that is on a two change it away from two two is yellow and it's just too difficult to see so I changed it to five. Five is blue. One is red. Um, there is a again in help documentation tells you how to. I think three is green from memory. Um, five is blue. Nice and easy. So use blue. It's always nice and easy to use. So that's a special cutout. You can have five per cabinet. The next one from special cutouts is custom machining. Now custom machining again end left. Um, I want to turn on custom machining on let's just choose four vents there's a lot of these things in here there it is four vents four vents top down wherever it is you've got four vents in there these are standard options um, I can go into here and go to say something like this hopefully look at that on there so these can do a whole lot with the with these cutouts these are actually really powerful things if you're not sure how to write these these are written in tables in the background if you're not sure how to do them contact tables so t-a-b-l-e-s at cabmastersoftware.com and just ask what it is you need to do. We can give you a hand writing them, send them to you, you throw them in the background, they're then available. There's a lot in here already. So these are all standard, all these things, wing lines, all these LED, you know, you've got LED things in here as well, strips, Nova options. There's a lot of things in here. You can do a whole lot of things with these custom um, cutouts. They're really powerful. You can also integrate these with other buttons inside the interface. So you can go, go and type things in the interface in the custom table. So they're really powerful. Um, so they actually integrate with when you go into uh, local properties so you turn these here on and you can actually rename these to whatever you want so I can call it you know with one so you can actually use something like that uh, once you've enabled these they're actually enabled at cabinet level as well so you can come into here and I'm going to have width one and I can type in if I had it set up in the custom table I could actually use this I could use this variable here to control anything in here so I could even change the width of these to this level here so they're very powerful how you can integrate them and how quickly you can in integrate them so they're brilliant love them um, very powerful for doing very specific things the other way you can do it is another one called defined cutouts now we've used these previously in, in other other packages of our software you can have 10 of these per cabinet now what these are is this is just add um, oh, let's go to samples I'm going to choose one of these whatever it is it's going to go into the end left because again I'm in the end left um, and you can specify how big it is so this here we're going to have an anchor I'll leave it down the bottom at the moment it's going to be 250 by 250 by 250 again it's bright yellow uh, put it into the center of the part uh, I can then offset it. Uh, I can repeat. I can do quantities. I can offset. So I'm going to go here minus 150. Um, and the color is 4. There you go. It's easy green. So this one will actually show, lets you select all the colors. So number 1 is red. There you go. 0 is black. Uh, number 6 is pink. There we go. Uh, and you can off. So this is if you offset it. So this is if we're going to offset it here. So there you go. So if I go again positive and negative minus 150, um, let's go down minus 100, try and get it somewhere it fits. So this is literally a DXF. You get a DXF file, um, you can import the DXF file and use that in here. Uh, you can again specify is it through, how deep do I want to go, bloody uh, 2.5 millimeters deep. Just want to engrave that. Uh, again, what layer do you want to use? Um, engrave. You can specify this again you need to set up this layer name in easy nest to make sure you've got a strategy assigned a tool assigned in a strategy to do that whatever the layer is called but you can do whatever you want with it so this becomes again very very powerful in here what you can do with it so we've made a complete mess of our end left so i'm going to stop viewing that i've got another area i want to show you before we get any further with this one and that is again in defined cutouts there's another checkbox here that is hidden we'd like to keep this a secret for absolutely no reason enable cabinet cutout this is the last one I'm going to show you today so when you do that 
these pages automatically appear and you'll see the pipe chase popped up in the back. There's a lot in here, so I'm going to go first one, configuration. And if you ever get stuck, come back to the standard configuration and run it again. What do you want? A pipe chase? I'm going to go for a horizontal pipe chase. Why not? Um, so a division in the front. So you can see the division goes right the way through there. Uh, a horizontal division. It's sitting on top of the shelf at the moment. Uh, front rail. I can have another rail or I can do a mullion in the front as well. So there's a mullion there. Again, they're just starting points. What do you want to do with it? Let's do something different today. Let's do a horizontal pipe chase. Next. Where do you want from the top? Let's start from the top. We're going to be zero from the top. There you go. And we're going to be 150 by 150. There we go. Finish. So that's now built that pipe chase through there. Now, what you can do is you can come into here. These, now, again, there's a lot in here. Um, don't get overwhelmed one thing at a time. And if you ever get stuck and something goes wrong, just go back to quick start and start again. Um, so full width. So again, we can, okay, we've can. we got this. Let's make this 250 high. I'll show these ones first. So you can do something really strange like that. Full width. I don't need to do full width. Let's just go um, 500. There we go. So there's that in there. If I change this to hidden view, it makes it, you can see, I can see inside the cabinet. But I can also come down to parts and say I want to have a left. I've now got a left end, so it's no longer, it's no longer it's now have a left end on it. Um, I can have a back on it and it'll put a back onto it. Um, it's now got the back in there as part of that. So I, I do I want a top? No, I don't want a top on it. It's now going to take away the top and cut it around there. How do you want to build this? And then you've got all your options below top, above bottom, in front of back, behind. Look at one thing at a time. Go, I need to do that, I need to do that. Don't get overwhelmed by the complexity of everything. This is a really, really powerful feature right here. You can do a lot with this. This is really powerful. Um, offsets. Look at the pictures. <laughs> um, if I want to offset this in X, uh, 100 millimeters, what it's going to do, it's going to do that. There you go. Again, there's no end on that one. Go back to parts, add the, add the right hand end on that one there so it's not see through anymore. Um, you've got a lot of control in these things. Um, again, offsets through here, box offsets, what do you want to do with it? Um, you've you got your materials, you can change all your materials per parts. You can also do different machining for different parts, the ends, screw holes, how do you want to do those sorts of things as well. But it's a very, very powerful feature. Um, again, parts, and I'm going to go add in my right and you'll see the right part will appear um, and there will be options to move them around offset them all those sorts of things as well so but you can turn on any part you like so that doesn't have to be a pipe chase it can be literally a, a hidden box behind your cabinet it can be anything like that it can be a horizontal or vertical pipe chase it can be a division it's a really powerful thing and if you ever get stuck come back here start again let's go yep I want this to be a pipe chase from the top um, again, it needs to construct it yet. It's not sure what you're doing. Do that. I want to start on the right hand side, zero from the right, um, 250 by 100. Next. Um, do you want to get for the bottom? No. You get for the top? No, it goes all the way to the top. Yes, I want to leave a gap for the back. Finish. So it's now going to put it together. You see it's now sitting in front of the back. There you go. So my back sits there, so it's left a gap for the back, but it goes all the way to top and bottom as well. What do you want to do with it? It's an awesome tool. Hopefully that will give you some uh, a lot more advanced machining options in CAMAS software. So thank you very much for watching this video.